welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to be talking about Race Studio 3 analysis. Now the software itself went into production a couple of weeks ago and this tutorial is part of a series where we're going to be digging into the how-to's and the form and the function of each of the uh, analysis capabilities of the new software. In particular, today we're going to be looking at how to be able to create custom segments within tracks so that you can actually do some segment-based analysis. Now, the difference between Race Studio 2 analysis, the older software that we're all very used to using, and the new Race Studio 3 analysis is that unlike the old software where you would have had to have gone and create a track map and uh, either use the default segments that it created or specify your own, in the Race Studio 3 analysis, it will actually create the first track map and segments for you automatically. All you need to make sure is that when you import your files or you download your data, you're getting all of that GPS data with it, which for most of us is automatic uh, and happens 99.9% .9 of the time. To know you've got that GPS information, one of the things that you can use to be able to make sure, and let's switch to the software to be able to see, is that if you're in the uh, test database or the uh, library of files that you have, just click on this button here. And one of the things you'll notice is if you have this map, and it also has uh, an overlay on the uh, GPS uh, software. Here it's using an overlay on top of Google Earth. You know that they've got that GPS information is available with the file, so it should automatically create the segments for you. Now I do have segments created for Silverstone National because I've used this before in demonstrations, but I actually don't for Brands Hatch. And so if I go in here, yes, I've got the right GPS information. You can see that because uh, I've got... Uh, uh, a video overlaying, or I should say a, a, a map overlaying here um, of, uh, of uh, sort of Brands Hatch Indie Circuit. And so what I'd like to do is I'm going to open that up. And when I do so, uh, we're going to use the um, uh, time distance that we created earlier, where we've got our GPS latitude and our longitudinal information. But one of the things you'll notice here is that you've got these segments. I didn't create these. These were created automatically by AIM, and they usually represent an element of the track which um, is either green is a straight, blue is usually a right-hand turn, and red is usually a left-hand turn. And if we click on any of these particular areas, we can see that this is Graham Hill Bend, and so that's a left-hand turn. We can see that this, for example, is Druids here, so we can see that's a right-hand turn. And so the system has automatically created those segments for us. But what if we want to be able to customize this for ourselves and we want to be able to specify what those segments need to be that work for us? I mean, any of us who watch something like Formula One, for example, know that there are only three segments um, uh, as part of the, uh, the track. Many of us only like to use sort of five or so segments so we can remember what we were doing at a particular point on track. But there's so many different variations that we need to figure out how to be able to create our own track maps and be able to customize them. So that's what we're going to do. Now, what I'm going to recommend to start off with is that uh, you don't actually edit any of these segments that have been created. The reason being is that you may always want to be able to go back to that default setup that AIM created, which was straights, rights and lefts. To be able to clone this or to create a second version, you're going to click on this button here that says choose a track map. If I click here, I've got the option of being able to create a new track map. And if I click on this gear icon here, I could create um, a clone of those. So if I click on clone the splits, what this is gonna allow me to be able to do is to be able to clone these splits and then call them something else. And so I'm gonna click on there and I'm going to create um, a uh, Brands Indie uh, Custom View or Custom Splits, we'll call it. And then if I click on OK, you'll notice that now this second one has appeared. Now, right now, they're both identical and there's no real difference. But if I click on this one and I click on OK, it's going to ask me if I want to apply this to all the sessions run on that date. I do. Um, right now, it won't mean anything, but as we go through, we'll be able to edit it. So I'm going to click on Yes. And right now, these are all the same. But what it does mean is I now have the opportunity of editing these without the worry that I'm going to lose that baseline aim setup that came initially when I opened the file. So to be able to edit those, what we're going to look for is when the mouse icon changes to a finger. And you can see that here, that it's mouse and then a finger. What that means is that there's something I can do within this particular area of the split. And if I right click here, it's going to give me a series of options that are available. 
And so for example, if I said I want to merge this with the next split, it merges it with the next split and creates a much bigger one. If I wanted to resize it, look for when the uh, mouse becomes one of those icons with the sort of the arrows that point that direction. And what I can do is I can drag it and change the size of the split. If I wanted to be able to cut it in half, I can click on divide split. Um, I can also merge it with the previous split, for example, and I can do it with the previous split, or if I wanted to do this, I could merge with both sides. And so I can do all these ways of being able to either use the splits that were created by AIM or create my own ones for this particular track that we wanted to be able to have a look at. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this down and have a look at some aspects of, uh, of Brands Hatch naming some of the corners, because that's what I wanna be able to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the mouse about here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on divide the split. It will always divide it close to where you had that original split. Because what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to measure each of the corners. Now I know, for example, that coming through this corner, if I scroll the mouse and I follow the dot on the map down here, you can see that this is coming through Paddock Hill. So what I can do is if I wanna be able to create a split for Paddock Hill, what I can do is I can say, okay, once I'm through there, let's um, create a split there. Um, I can merge these two together, merge with the previous split, and then I wanna resize it to about there. And then the next thing is, is we generally said that right hand turns are blue. So if I right click there and I can set the split, I can say that corner two, which I know is, is, a, is a right hand turn, or it could just be corner two. You can color these however you want. This is just the default that comes with AIM. That gives me the opportunity of saying this is Paddock Hill. Now, if I right click in that, I can now rename it. And so what I can do here is I can call it, I'm just gonna call it Paddock, and I'm gonna click on OK. Then I'm gonna resize uh, the next bit, which is the straight that runs up to Druids. And so I'm gonna click it about here, and I'm probably gonna grab it about there. And then I'm gonna right click on that, set a split type straight. And so I'm gonna say rename, I'm gonna call this straight one. Now, if you've got multiple straights, you cannot call each straight straight as it is because you cannot have two segments with the same name. So I'm gonna call each of the straights a different particular name. So I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna bring this one um, to uh, uh, sort of, uh, this is gonna be um, Druid, so I can bring it here. So I can right click here, set split type at, Druids is a right hand turn, right click, rename, I call this one Druids. And then what I can do is I can rename uh, this one and I can say this one is uh, Graham Hill. Um, I can right click on this one, rename it and call it straight two. I can rename this one. I'm not gonna change the size of it. I'm gonna call this one Certes. I'm gonna rename this one and I'm gonna call this Clearways. I'm gonna click okay there and I'm gonna right click on this last one just for the purposes of demonstration. I'm gonna call this one straight three. Now what it's done is it's allowed me to be able to custom create the segments that I need. I could have 10 segments, I could have five segments, I can choose where they need to be based upon what my particular requirements are going to be. Knowing of course that this is the custom split that I've set up, but if I ever wanted to, I could toggle back to those original ones that were set up by AIM right at the beginning uh, of the setup. Now, the reason that this is useful, and we're gonna get into this later in some of the other demonstrations, is by having segments whether they're named. Now remember, if you're in the US, for example, where corners aren't named as much, they're more uh, associated with corner numbers, um, then you may just have corner one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or however many you have. If you've got segments, you can call them segment. I've just happened to have chosen the corner names for some of the tracks that happen here in the UK. Totally up to you, and it's one of the real beauties of the Race Studio 3, is you can customize so much as you go through. Now, what I'm gonna show is that the reason this is useful is for a number of reasons. The first is if I wanted to be able to then say, let's compare some laps. So if you remember from previous webinars, I can just pick my best three laps here. The first thing you can see here is that I can see these laps. I can make sure the best one is a reference lap. And we can see where there was improvement and where laps lost time. So Druids looks like an area where I'm losing sort of time and there's a lot of inconsistency. What I can do then is instead of sort of zooming in here using these tools, 
I can just double click on the word Druids now and I can zoom in and I can see what each lap was doing and I can see where I was losing time and I can also see what the time was through that particular lap. And so it's an easier way of being able to navigate your actual track map as relates to the time distance graph. The next thing that I can do is I can also go in and I can use this for other features. Now we're gonna dig into these in more detail in later tutorials, but I'm just gonna load up the split times report as an example. And this breaks down every lap into each of these segments to be able to give you an idea in terms of your performance through those segments. And we're gonna dig into this more detail, but just to show you how it works. And so if you remember on the time distance, these were the segments we created. Now, if we go into the split times report as an example, you can see they're all represented here. So we can see the performance through each of those. We can see the track map is now representing each of those segments we've created. So it's totally customizable and you can do so much with each of the particular segments that is there. So with that, I'm gonna end this tutorial and we'll move on to other areas where this segment analysis is going to be useful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, please subscribe, it'll be lovely because you're gonna get lots of videos like this throughout the whole of the year as we really dig into the Race Studio 3 analysis software. And with that, it just leaves me to say thanks so very much for watching this video.